Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. About the middle of May 2018, I spent a couple of days in the backcountry of Lapland testing a Raspberry Pi powered Yezu FT891 for digital modes and an ammo can go box concept. The point of integrating the Raspberry Pi with the Yezu FT891 was to reduce the size and complexity of the computer required for digital modes. The point of the ammo can go box was to carry a complete HF station and a MAM portable package. So stick with me a while and let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. The trip to Laplan was broken down into two single-day hikes. On the first day, we stayed below the Arctic Circle at Grid Square Kilopapa 26, Joliet, Lima. That was an old gold mining area, and it was actually a pretty cool location. We needed to find a camping spot with trees, that shouldn't be too difficult, but also with an open space to lay out the solar panel, and also a good place to... Uh, sit down and get comfortable while operating. And this turned out to be the perfect place. It seems like it's becoming kind of a tradition, but before setting up the radio gear, we started up a fire and got ourselves comfortable and took in the view. There's no point to hike to these places if you don't appreciate them while you're there. For this day hike, I used the most uncomfortable backpack I have. That's this Condor 3-Day Assault Pack. I chose this backpack because the point of this trip was to see how practical it is to carry a QRO field station into the back country with your food and camping gear for the day. There certainly would have been better choices, but I wanted to do it the hard way the first time out. So let's skip the hiking gear and jump straight into what I carried in the ammo can. All of you interested in portable power should recognize this one. This is our 10 amp hour, 50 amp current draw lithium iron phosphate battery pack. Babysitting the battery pack, we have the Genison GV10 lithium for lithium iron phosphate batteries. I know this is all a mess for the moment, but the goal was to see if we could fit the entire HF station in this ammo can go box. So the go box included the Samsung Galaxy Tab Active, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, the ZLP Mini Pro SC audio interface, the 10 amp hour battery and the Guinness Sun charge controller, plus the Yaesu FT891. The only two things outside of the ammo can were the solar panel and the antenna. So now let's take a look at what's going on with the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. I ordered this Raspberry Pi 3B Plus from Kanakit on Amazon. It's the latest version of the Raspberry Pi project. I was specifically interested in this particular Raspberry Pi because of its capabilities. 1.4 GHz quad-core 64-bit processor, uh, a gig of RAM, 2.4 and 5 gigs onboard Wi-Fi, plus Bluetooth BLE onboard. Uh, of course, it's got the micro SD and the 40-pin GPIO header. This board also has four USB ports, and we use them for interfacing the audio interface and the CAT control for the Yaesu FT891. Now in practice, when we're in the field, I use the Android Galaxy Tab Active to access the Raspberry Pi over a VNC server. I use a VNC client running on the Android tablet to start and run the VNC server running on the Raspberry Pi. If you are interested, you can find the VNC client in the Google Play Store. So let's go ahead and start up the VNC client and log on to the Raspberry Pi. One of the apps I've been using and testing on the Raspberry Pi is WSJTX. 
I've been using it for FT8 and Whisper testing. I initially installed the WSJTX uh, packages from the Raspbian repositories, but they were outdated. I was able to find a couple of useful tutorials. The first showed me how to switch over to a repository that had updated packages for WSJTX. The second showed me how to compile my own version from the source. This version of WSJTX is 1.9.0 Release Candidate 3. It looks about as close as we're going to get to the full desktop version, and it includes all of the different modes, including Whisper and FT8. It also appears that many of the radios supported in the desktop version are supported on this version for Raspberry Pi. Now, along with FL Digi, I also installed FL Rig, and I'll tell you why. As long as you're operating somewhere near the radio, you can always reach over to adjust the settings. Although many applications offer us uh, band changing or frequency changing and push to talk, they don't offer us the capabilities of adjusting the filtering, transmit power, and things like that. So we need to utilize FL Rig to make those changes when we're away from the radio. Now I'm using the FT891 to make this video and the FT891 is not completely supported in this version of FL Rig for Raspberry Pi. Since many of the basic commands are similar between the FT891 and the FT991, I was able to use the FT991 implementation of FL Rig to adjust some of the settings. Unfortunately, the filtering settings uh, aren't really supported with this workaround. It's annoying, but it's not a deal breaker. Uh, for example, volume control is working, digital noise reduction is working, uh, output power is working, and uh, a few other things which are important to everyday operations. It would be a huge favor if you all would help me reach out to the FL Digi development crew and ask them to support the FT891 in FL Digi and FL Rig. When I want to start FL Digi, I'll start FL Rig first because the FT891 is not supported in Hamlib. That's not really a problem, and at least we have FL Digi running on Raspberry Pi. Now, I haven't done a lot of testing with uh, FL Digi yet, but I have been able to set it up and get FSQ working. Now, using FL Digi with a headless Raspberry Pi can be kind of challenging because there's no touch support in FL Digi. So if you're not a tablet commando, I would suggest a wireless keyboard and mouse. So it's not perfect, but you know what? It is light years ahead of what we have on Android at the moment. Here's a look at the modes supported in this Raspberry Pi version of FL Digi. Now, a couple of the modes that are extremely important to the utilitarian amateur radio operator are there. Of course, there's Contestia, there's Olivia, there's FSQ. They're all in there and they're all working. We'll need to spend a lot of time out in the field before we can definitively say this, but it appears to me a headless Raspberry Pi with an Android tablet controlling it. This is what we've been missing in amateur radio field communications for quite some time. I'm carrying the Android tablet anyway, but adding a small, lightweight, and power-efficient Raspberry Pi? Well, that's not too much to ask. At least from my perspective, it seems the Raspberry Pi and the Android tablet are augmenting one another quite well. So I'm extremely happy to have invested the time in the Raspberry Pi for ham radio. Honestly, I'm freaking out about all of the things I could show you, but I think I'd like to move on to WSJTX running FT8 on the Raspberry Pi headless through the Android tablet. WSJTX wasn't necessarily designed to use on a touchscreen, but it works quite well. And using it with the Android tablet without wires means you can enjoy a more comfortable operating position. 
Let's transition over to the Android screen to show you what I'm actually doing in the QSO I'm having with WSJTX running FT8. So this was my very first QSO with the Raspberry Pi and the Yaesu FT891 from the field. That's Joliet Hotel 1, Sierra Lima Whiskey in Japan. I'll make a separate video about that QSO from the field as well as my operating conditions, but I have to say, I don't have the data to back it up, but it appears to me, my gut feeling says the Raspberry Pi is decoding much better than my Windows laptop. Have any of you had that same experience with WSJTX running on a Raspberry Pi? Let me know in the comments. I've got a couple of more videos in the editor from this Lapland trip, so stand by for those. Also remember to check out the description for the episode notes and remember we're not just about YouTube. There's also www.oh8stn.org. Rock and roll guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.